Hey, it's Easter weekend, and coming up on Laker TV, we'll have a visit from the Easter Bunny. And why are so many teenagers taking medication for depression? I don't know. We'll explore that issue today in a special Focal Point segment. That and more next on Laker TV. We taught him how to hit a baseball, how to hit a receiver. He even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Good afternoon, Lakers. My name is Cody Derricks. And I'm Kenny Buchanan. And welcome to another edition of Laker TV. Do you want to know a secret? Is it scary? It's terrifying. Oh my, well, what is it? I'm terrified to be sitting up here today. Well, as long as you don't embarrass yourself in front of the whole school, be the butt of every joke, and be shunned forever, it won't be that bad. <laughs> on to the show. Also, a sad moment of silence for Kaylee Anderson's phone, which was shattered on Thursday. Rest in peace, Kaylee's phone. The soothsayer once told Julius Caesar to beware the Ides of March. The Calvary County FFA swept up awards with ease last Tuesday at the FFA Paperwork Regional Competition. The FFA took 30 applications and threw only three placed as regional champions. Also, Shelby Bella was selected as the regional winner of the $500 KAAE scholarship. Congratulations to her and all that participated. Not only is FFA sweeping categories and taking names, but our very own teacher and basketball coach, Mr. Birdsong, is taking some names of his own. Coach Birdsong was selected as an inductee into 2016 Kentucky Association of Basketball Coaches Court of Honor. This award is designed to recognize coaches whose careers have brought great honor to the basketball coaching profession. So we had reporter Lindsay Stairs ask Coach Birdsong just what this award meant to him. Our very own Coach Birdsong has won four regional titles at both Callaway County and Graves County. So it's not a surprise that he was inducted into the 2016 Court of Honor. What does this award mean to you? Well, it, it's, uh, it means I'm getting old, for one. I've been doing this a long time, and, and uh, I've just been very fortunate. I've had very good assistant coaches. I've had very good players. And just to be able to do it over a 20-year period at a pretty consistent level is probably the thing I'm most proud of. Uh, the regional championships are nice and all that. But, it's, you know, it's building relationships. It's having the influence on the lives of others. So coaching has been very rewarding for me, and this is just um, kind of a, I guess, a way of putting it all together. Congratulations, Coach Birdsong, and to keep the winning streak rolling, for the sixth consecutive year, the CCHS Laker Concert Band earned distinguished ratings in every category from every judge. The concert band competed at the KMEA First District State Concert Performance Assessment that passed this past Monday night at Paducah Tillman High School. Congratulations, guys. Cody, what's your shoes favorite type of music? I don't know. What is it? Soul ha. <laughs> that was so terrible. It's gonna take a while for that to heal. Heal ha. Yeah. As you can see, our jokes are outdated. But you know what isn't outdated? The shoes in this next story. Sure, a lot of students have part-time jobs, but there's a few Lakers out there that actually have their, started their own business. Reporter Mally Halava brings us a special segment today, featuring a CCHS entrepreneur. All right, what is up? It's your guys from Shoebox Ball and. Today we're going to be talking about some releases, we're going to be um, talking about some uh, new drops that are coming out. Alright, what's up guys? We are live from Matt's car. We just hit up Foot Locker. Alright, what is up you two? You trying to keep your sneakers clean. It's raining outside. You want to wear your fire kicks. Wait. I'm like any other kid. I like shoes and it's just kind of a hobby of mine. Jordan Higgins, a sophomore, a part of Cali High student body, and most interestingly, a shoe enthusiast and young entrepreneur. Jordan consumes and distributes the most popular shoes, produces YouTube reviews about shoes, and has even begun to design merchandise for his business called Shoebox Vault. Just like it is to any other kid, making money is quite exciting. However, Jordan has another drive that will benefit him in My the motivation is really, I just want to have fun doing stuff. I know making money is all right and everything, but in the end, it's all about having fun and actually enjoying what I do. And like any aspect in life, there is always something to be learned. Jordan describes what he has gained personally since his entrepreneurship debut. Um, I've learned that you know doing your own thing is possible and you can actually do it. And um, if you put your mind to something, that you can make it happen. This country has a constant demand for new products and especially new entrepreneurs. So, here's some advice for anyone who aspires to attain his or her goal. Um, don't think your goals are 
not realistic because you can do anything you really want to. It doesn't matter if you're, doesn't matter. It goes beyond entrepreneurship. It goes into anything you want to do. For Laker TV, I'm Mallory Halava. Okay. Now that I've seen that story, I want a pair of those wooden sandals. What do you call them? Jerusalem cruisers? <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Or some of those Persian fighting shoes. What do you think, Kenan? Well, I wish they'd bring back those Heelys. You know, back in middle school, you used to roll around and you could break your face wearing them. <laughs> what do you think my face looks like, this? That'd explain quite a bit. Okay, seniors, don't forget about the design contest for this year's Project Graduation t-shirts. The deadline is April 1st. That's next Friday. That's right, Einstein. Thanks for pointing that out. You're welcome. All right, everybody. When we come back, Focal Point looks at a troublesome issue. We'll be right back right soon. <laughs> Day three, I, I think the, that thing, that monster has been stalking my room. I just, I ran out of food, I ran out of water, and Richard has taken the last of the rations. I just, I don't know what I need to do. Oh, that sound, it's still coming at me. Oh. Wait, it, it, it stopped. Maybe now's my time to get more rations. Maybe the coast is clear. I'm check it out. Wish me luck. Okay. It seems clear. <laughs> you want some pressure coming in? Look! Look at that one. some love. What am I gonna do? I really needed those rations. You can't escape from me either, buddy. <laughs> oh my. I'm gonna have to try again. Okay. Come on, come on, Richard. You're gonna be my test dummy. Maybe. Be free, Richard. Didn't like you know how. The coast is clear. Okay. Oh, he's close. Got the milk. Okay. Squ squirtable cheese is always good. Okay. I think I got all the rations I need. Okay. Maybe you should get that chocolate Easter bunny in the cabinet. Oh no. Oh my. Are you ready to die? No. Some eggs. No, no, sir. I'm a woman. This isn't gonna end well for me, is it? Exactly! Go with me, little boy! Please! No! I don't want to do the Easter thing! Oh, you're gonna oh, love it as no, much as no, I do! No. She'll be my princess! Hello! What are you? I want to be a interior designer. I want to be a preschool teacher. I want to be an animator. I don't know. Don't wait until after high school to find a career choice. Planning ahead will save you time and money later. To find out more, go to know how to go ky.org. The number of American teenagers who say they suffer from depression has been growing for decades. So why are we so unhappy? A study conducted by psychologists at San Diego State University concluded that the most likely culprit in changes is our cultural values that are making teens feel more anxious, depressed, isolated, and stressed out. Today on Laker TV produces Deanna Rodman, Haley Haplin, and Josh Connor take a closer look at teens and depression. It's an issue often overlooked or completely ignored because of the stereotype that teens are moody and immature. However, adolescent depression is directly responsible for over 5,000 teen suicides each year. And new research indicates that one out of every eight teenagers qualify to be diagnosed as depressed. We were curious how students here at CCHS felt about the issue, so we conducted a small survey. We found that 88% of those who participated felt depression was a serious issue amongst teens. Furthermore, 75% of students said they have friends or family members who suffer from depression. 
What's causing this increase in the amount of teens suffering from depression? We talked with Murray State clinical psychology graduate students Brooke Jacobs and Brooke Smith who told us more. Is on the increase, um, I would say that maybe it's being talked about a little bit more now and that could be leading to more diagnoses. So that could be actually a good thing that is occurring that so many um, teens who are experiencing the depression aren't going without notice. So that maybe we are noticing some more of the symptoms of depression in the teen and we're able to accurately diagnose them and hopefully get them some help. And I, going off from what you said, I, I think that you're right in saying that it's becoming more knowledgeable about the symptoms of depression and, and two, teens are becoming more comfortable with talking about it, I think, than they, they used to be. Um, and so now, you know, they, they feel more comfortable going and actually getting help. So that may be why we're seeing that increasing trend. If you feel like you may suffer from depression, here's some tips. Try to make new friends. Healthy relationships are crucial to having a healthy self-esteem. Participate in sports or hobbies. Get out and do something. It will most likely take your mind off negative things. Choose healthy food and drinks. Research shows that your diet, especially if it's high in sugars, can make you seriously depressed. Eating healthy will have the opposite effect. Lastly, ask a trusted adult for help. Asking for medical help when suffering from depression may seem like a big step, but there are many doctors and clinicians who are ready and willing to make you happy and healthy again. There's lots of different treatment approaches that a clinician could take when treating depression. I mean, it, one thing that we like to do in our clinic is target um, that individual's specific problems that they may be having or different things that they want to work on. Um, so sometimes with depression, we see individuals who like to withdraw themselves and kind of um, go off on their own and, and don't really do the activities they used to enjoy. I mean, that's typically what people think of when they think of depression. And so one of the things that we like to do um, in, in therapy and then have the client take that home with them and then do it on their own is kind of like what we call behavioral activation. And so that's just coming up with a list of different things that the client likes to do themselves. So that could be like going to a movie or going and out, out to eat with friends or doing something like that. And I think um, that has been something that's been successful in my past experience with clients is just getting them involved in things that they used to enjoy doing again. So different things like that. It's a sad truth, but depression that goes untreated can lead to self-harm or suicide. If you have a friend or family member who suffers from depression, it's important to watch them closely when their behavior changes. It could be an indication that they are seriously considering suicide. Warning signs that someone might be suicidal include having an overwhelming sense of guilt, shame, or rejection, a dramatic change in personality or appearance, giving away belongings, and having an obsession with death. Four out of five teens who committed suicide conveyed clear warnings and they shouldn't have been ignored. Simply offering help and listening to someone you think might be suicidal could save their life. Even if they're not suicidal, helping them with their depression can improve their life forever. Here's something to think about. A recent study published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry reports that almost 70% of the people taking antidepressants have never really suffered from major depressive disorder. That's a lot of people on Prozac. Is it over yet? Pretty much. And you only stuttered twice, uh, offended three people, and caused a small riot. So it's not that bad for your first time anchoring. <laughs> it's bad than your first time anchoring. <laughs> oh, you just wait till this camera stops rolling, Cody. See you next year, Lakers. Because you're not going to be here next year because I'm an engine. <gasps> that wasn't very nice. Well, see you next week, Lakers, and have a happy Easter. I'm gonna hurt you. Okay.